Um, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Angie, or I go by Webjig on the internet, except for uh, Gmail. There's somebody else. They get many confused emails. Um, I'm a product manager, core maintainer, and community cat herder at Drupal, and I work on the Drupal acceleration team at Acquia, where I'm paid. I'm in the very fortunate position to be paid full time to contribute to open source, which is really great. Um, so I'm here to tell you about collaboration needs of massive open source communities like Drupal. And when I say massive, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, Drupal powers between five and 13% of the internet, depending on what you're looking at. Uh, we have over 120,000 contributors. Um, Drupal is also extremely old. Like when I joined the project back in 2005, we were still using CVS because that was cool at the time. Uh, and because Drupal is this really, you know, creatively flexible framework that can do everything from powering a ship to you know running a cat blog, uh, we used it to build our own kind of GitHub back in the day, um, which might have made sense in 2003. But in 2021, when there's a lot of these great collaboration tools that focus on being great collaboration tools, uh, it makes a lot more sense to use one of them. And so uh, spoiler alert, we're working on moving to vanilla GitLab. Sorry, GitHub. Um, I know you're giving me the space for this talk, um, but that's kind of where, where we're at. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that because GitLab, like GitHub, like Jira, these are you know enterprise collaboration tools. Um, and I wanted to talk about that because there's a lot of places where an enterprise collaboration tool makes certain assumptions. You know, some assumptions that it makes are, for example, that everybody in your organization's going to fit very cleanly into these distinctly defined roles, like guest, reporter, developer, maintainer, owner. They make other assumptions too. For example, that everybody in your team works for the same company, kind of is aligned on the same goals, um, that they're paid to contribute. So they're gonna have sustained attention given to whatever problem that they're assigned to. And that you know everybody else is kind of an outsider and they're there to kind of take from and not give to your project. That's, that's sort of the mentality kind of baked into an enterprise tool. But in open source, you, all of those assumptions kind of go out the window. For example, uh, these folks don't work for the same company. They probably don't work for any company and they may work for competing companies. Uh, so you kind of have that you know, dimension to look after. Um, there is no possible way for all of the contributors in a massive open source project to even know each other, let alone trust each other. Um, many, many, many of these contributors are volunteers. Um, who are donating nights and weekends time to get things done. Um, you know, Paulus emphasized that no one's entitled to your time and I would back that up. So as an open source community builder, you, you know, the time that your contributors are giving you is precious and valuable and you have to make the most of it every single time. And then finally, these so-called outsiders, they are integral to your contribution process. Somebody might come in and just drop the best accessibility review you've ever read in your life. You have no idea who they are, but they learned about Drupal and they flocked into the issue where we're talking about how to put a new default theme in core and they start giving really, really awesome advice. Um, so we kind of turn the model upside down and that has a few implications when we actually put these tools into practice. So, oh, right. And uh, by the way, those aren't the only roles. There are more roles as well. So I picked a couple labels from Miles's talk, you know, uh, we have Drive-By Danny, and Dr Drive-By Danny shows up once, does something, and then we never see her again. Who knows? Hopefully she's having a nice life out there somewhere. There's Life Happens Lena. You know, here's a key contributor to your project who suddenly, for whatever reason, vanishes. Might be a medical issue, might be I need a mental health break, might be I had a child, whatever it is, they're gone. And unlike in, you know, an enterprise organization where then you all oh, just assign another person to your role because we're obviously hiring a backfill for you. Um, that is not the reality in the open source projects. You kind of have to scrowl around. Uh, there's provisional PAM. You know, one of the ways that you help is, you know, as Miles was saying, you bring on new maintainers, but you might want that maintainer to kind of be in training so they can sign off, but not necessarily merge things. You have a single point of failure, Sally. She's the lone single person in this entire world who knows how that one particular something works. And God help your project if anything ever happens to her. And then finally, you might have bad actor Betty, who's, you know, she's a troll. She's looking for trouble. She's trying to actually cause your project pain. So that assumption that everybody's trustworthy and everybody has the best project's interest at heart, you can't kind of rock with that assumption. So let's show an example of how defining an issue works at Acme Corporation. So you might have a reporter, you know, she might be a product manager or product owner who writes a really well-defined issue, you know, with steps to reproduce, success criteria, maybe there's mock-ups attached to it, that kind of thing. Following the project template very closely, a developer on her team posts some clarifying information, maybe about the spec, maybe about some research that they've done. The reporter comes back and says, oh, that's a great point. I'm going to update that issue summary with all the additional details. And then when the maintainer rolls around and gets probably assigned this issue by their paid job, uh, they read over the issue summary, say, cool, I got this, and then they get to work. 
Uh, so very straightforward, really awesome that these collaboration tools work in this scenario. In an open source project, however, um, sometimes you don't get a well-defined issue. Sometimes you get a drive-by Danny coming in there who obliterates the well-written issue template that you've created just so and replaces it with its broken fix it or something similarly like that. And then you get 27 people in there who are confused but well-meaning and they're trying to figure out like, well, did they press the any button, you know, or whatever, that kind of thing. Uh, you might have an argument that bad, you know, bad actor Betty just walks in there and starts throwing flames everywhere. You never know. It's always, you know, a surprise. Um, finally, someone appears who you may not have ever seen before. They figure out the actual problem. They pull detailed steps to review, reproduce it. Awesome. However, they can't edit the issue summary because they're not a reporter because we don't know who they are yet. So we haven't given them that role. And, you know, drive by Danny who can edit the issue summary. She's long gone and she's no longer in the project. So we're kind of in a pickle because then the maintainer comes along. And remember how time is valuable and precious? Well, they're going to waste so much time waiting through all of these 28 comments, trying to figure out what the heck the problem even is before she can get to work on what's happening. So here's an example of where, you know, open source sort of throws all these enterprise assumptions on its head. Another place this comes up is if you're fixing an issue. So we're back at Acme Corporation again. So we have a developer who creates a merge request or a pull request for review. Uh, then you have the maintainer who comes in and says, oh, I see where you're going. Here's some useful feedback on that. You might want to fix this up. And they say, oh, thank you very much. I'm going to update my merge and pull request to uh, you know, incorporate your feedback. And maintainer says, great, that looks awesome, approves and merges the changes. So that's the ideal flow. This is the flow that is kind of assumed is going to happen. In reality, you know, your uh, your issue might be create or sorry, your merge request might be started by life happens Lena. So it creates a merge request, marks it for review, and then vanishes off the face of this earth. Hopefully she's okay. Developer one comes in and says, ah, okay, here's some useful feedback. And hey, I can even propose a solution for my feedback. But I can't improve your code because I'm not a maintainer. Um, and I can't update your merge or pull request because it's yours and not mine. Uh, so developer two comes in and says, okay, well, we got to get this machine moving. So I'm going to create a new merge request that incorporates your feedback. Um, but now what's happened is the issue that, you know, you know, the problem that we're trying to solve is now bifurcated. And there's two different places where discussion is happening and two different competing solutions for how to solve that problem, which once again gets the maintainer who wastes more time trying to figure out where the heck they should even be starting, has to read through the discussion in two places and kind of reconcile whatever conversation has been happening. Um, and so we get into troubles that way. Um, so Drupal's bespoke tools that we've built over time um, kind of handle a few of these challenges. For example, we make issue summaries essentially wikis. So anybody can edit those um, and you know provide a single known place to understand the nuances of an issue and what remains to be done on it. And that saves a ton of time because a core committer can come in and read just that issue summary and maybe the last couple of comments since the issue summary was last updated and kind of get a really good sense right away of what's happening. And then there's per issue repositories. Um, this is kind of a thing we've done with GitLab where uh, we make sort of a shallow clone of the project, you know, Drupal in this case, and um, allow people to work on it and basically act as maintainers going back and forth, collaborate on code, almost making the code a wiki, if you will. This helps keep the discussion centralized as well as solutioneering centralized um, so that everybody's working in one place and collaborating together. We also have, based on Drupal's taxonomy system, a really robust issue classification system, and that allows crowdsourcing a lot of the issue triage and maintenance. And it's, it's pretty cool because you'll get some random person in Pune, India, who decides to you know, do a weekend sprint with a bunch of people in their local community. So they'll go through and tag a bunch of issues as Drupal Camp Pune 2021 or whatever, and then have a whole bunch of people working on stuff without you even knowing that that was the thing that was going to happen. Um, and then the last thing, and I want to actually delve into this a little bit because it gets at sort of maintainer uh, sustainability is we've invented uh, a contribution credit system to try to incentivize organizations to sponsor contributions. Um, and so how that works is whenever a user creates uh, any kind of you know, submission to an issue, whether it's a comment or they upload a screenshot or they write some documentation or they put some code up there, whatever it is, they can define how they're doing it. Are they as a volunteer? Are they doing it on behalf of an employer? Are they doing it on behalf of a customer that they're implementing Drupal for? 
Um, and then the maintainer, when they go to mark an issue fixed, is allowed to check off whichever people in the issue who participated, who had kind of the best contributions to it. And then they all get a credit on their user profile, which is nice if they're trying to get hired, they can point to their user profile as like a way that they've, you know, kind of here's all the cool stuff that I've done. But we also credit the organizations. So, you know, you can see like there's a page for Pfizer and Pfizer has all of these different issue credits that they have. This is really key when Pfizer's trying to hire really good Drupal developers because they can look and see, wow, okay, this company actually gives back time from their employees. I want to work there. Um, it also is something used by, uh, you know, like say the governments and stuff like that. Say they won't hire people who don't have contributions because they're helping to sustain open source. The other thing that happens is we have like a, a marketplace of all the different organizations that, you know, build Drupal sites or host Drupal sites, that kind of thing. And that is weighted by the, the contribution credits that they have. So there's sort of an incentive for our organizations to give more back and give sustained focus time from various open source contributors. And um, what this has done for us is it has allowed us to radically increase the sustainability of uh, contributions to Drupal. Uh, you can see about 68% or so of contributions at this point are purely sponsored. Some are a mix of volunteer and sponsored, and then we still have, you know, volunteer contributions as well. Um, so, you know, it's been a big boost for us, and it's something that we're hoping we can, you know, give uh, out, you know, get the code out there for other people to use because it's made a huge difference for our project. Um, so our path to GitLab is sort of a work in progress. I'd love to hear from you if some of these points resonate with your community. If you have ideas, come talk to me on Twitter or in GatherTown. Um, and yeah, let's work together to make robust, sustainable, open collaboration tools that work for everybody. So thank you. Thank you so much, Angie. That was super good. Uh, and um, definitely is going to add some fancy names <laughs> that, met. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to put together you know um, yeah. thanks so much for the opportunity as well i really appreciate the uh you know the platform and uh that the event you were organizing is just it's awesome to get all of us together and sharing ideas so thank you so much oh yeah. well um thank you for me <laughs> putting, putting all the goodness into it and if you have time i'm sure folks would love to stick around and ask some questions in gather and just i'll be there so cool yeah. Maybe drive by Danny will be in. <laughs>